Hi everyone. Um, in this series of lectures, I'll discuss about the phase lock loops. Um, in fact, mainly I'll focus on the evolution of phase lock loops from uh, 1980s um, to almost 2020. So that's nearly four decades of the evolution of phase lock loops. So in this lecture, I'll mainly outline or give an outline, give an idea of what I'll be discussing in this uh, course. So first I'll go through the history of phase lock loops. I'll very briefly touch upon how phase lock loops evolved uh, from the World War II uh, era and mainly uh, the significant growth in phase lock loops happened during 1980s to uh, 2020. So that's when we saw the cellular revolution and one of the major applications of phase lock loops is a frequency synthesizer. And uh, that's where uh, we find a good use of applications of, of phase lock loops. And I'll try to present the history from that point of view at a very, uh, at a surface level. Then I'll discuss about the parameters to characterize how good a PLL is or how good eventually the PLL generates a clock reference, how good the uh, clock is. And the metrics to characterize the, uh, the performance or, or how good the clock is or jitter and phase noise. And I'll mathematically I'll try to derive some uh, very rigorously I'll try to uh, derive results for phase noise using some very standard uh, approximations. Uh, we'll show that for a white noise how does the spectrum look like and, uh, and, and for flicker noise how does the spectrum look like. We'll, I'll try to present a more rigorous analysis. So I'll also try to give uh, um, a good uh, mathematical basis for understanding cyclostationary random processes so which is what a noise process in a phase lock loop is then uh, one of the most popular phase lock loop architectures is the charge form periods um, which became i mean which whose architectures existed in 1970s onwards but more popularly it, it, it emerged in 1980s and very similar papers were written in that time uh, early 1980s so I'll a significant portion of portion of this course, I'll uh, focus on the charge from PLLs, how to model them in time domain, how to model them in frequency domain, how to do a noise analysis of charge from PLLs. Uh, in fact, uh, most of the PLLs in 1990s and 2000s were charge from uh, PLL architectures. Of course, PLLs were used not only in synthesizers but also in um, as as uh, clocks in or clock generators in processors and other and other digital systems. So we'll discuss how to do a noise analysis and I'll start from the jitter specifications and how to derive the individual parameters, which architectures for uh, loop filter that one should choose. All that I'll be discussing in this part of the course. Then other major problem is about the area in uh, charge pump periods. So I'll also discuss how to choose the different loop filter architectures. I'll present what are the uh, what 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 kind of loop filter architectures that one can go for um, to minimize to optimize area in analog charge from PLs. So that I'll also spend some considerable amount of time on this topic as well. Then uh, one of the most important PLL architectures, which is called as the fractional in PLs. This is more of a 1990s uh, work. I mean, fractional in PLs gained significance in 1990s with the explosive growth of cellular technology. Uh, the thing with cellular technology is as the number of users grew, uh, the number of channels or the bands, uh, the channels associated for every standard also grew um, significantly. So that required uh, the local oscillators both at the uh, transmitter and the receiver uh, to be to have the capacity to generate frequency sources with very very uh, very uh, very small spacing between two uh, carrier frequencies and we will see that when you uh, if you just use a classic integer in phase lock loop uh, you will end up with problems of uh, lower bandwidth and all that I'll, I'll talk about that in more more about it in when i talk about uh, the history of uh, PLLs. so there is a classic problem of bandwidth versus uh, frequency spacing um, in, in integer and phase lock loops. And that problem is very cleverly resolved in a fractional and PLM. So I'll uh, talk a good deal about the history um, and the history part and also the I'll do a proper mathematical analysis of uh, fractional and phase lock loops at a system level and uh, I'll do noise analysis and all that, how to characterize and how to design a fractional and phase lock loop. And uh, then um, we'll also focus on the evolution of the reference also. So generally a PLL is a 
as a simplest element it can see it can be seen as a frequency multiplier so it multiplies the input clock and generates an output clock so the input clock is generally a, a quartz crystal historically it has been a quartz crystal but from 2000 early 2000s onwards uh, there was a new emergence of mems microelectronic microelectromechanical systems and uh, so mems based oscillators have also become significantly uh, have have significantly improved over years from 2000 the early 2000s and uh, there were a good startup companies which were startups in 2000s have evolved into big uh, big big companies now and the performance of mems based oscillators are as good as quartz crystals so we'll talk about what are these mems and quartz crystals uh, when i discuss about the reference sources because this is very important to understand how good the reference sources are uh, because once you have good reference sources uh, that eventually leads to the design of very very low noise phase clock loops to design a very low noise phase clock loop eventually fundamentally you need to have very low very low noise references and we'll see that when we discuss noise analysis that part will become clear why do we need very low noise reference sources and then uh, towards the end of this series of lectures i'll be discussing about the new pll architectures so this is um, this is more of as we move towards a uh, lower and lower jitter phase clock loop so for example in 1990s we were talking about jitter in the order of picoseconds and in 2000s it was always sub picoseconds was pretty common um, in hundreds of femtoseconds now in 2010s and 2020 we are we are in the range of sub 100 femtoseconds so to go there there were some new pll architectures um, which are which, uh, which 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 are very commonly used um, to to attain really really low jitter numbers one such architecture is a sub sampling phase clock loop um, this is more of uh, this is a work developed in university of 20 around uh, uh, 2009 2008 and after that it gained significant attention both in academia and industry and then uh, the new architectures uh, injection lock i mean these the ideas are pretty uh, i would say primitive but they gain significance in the recent times if you have a very good reference source uh, then by having a really large bandwidth we can generate a very good uh, a very good clock multiplied clock at the output by using this architectures called recirculating multiplying dlls or uh, injection lock phase injection lock uh, pll's so we'll talk about all these three architectures uh, in good detail uh, when we uh, discuss about the uh, the new generation of phase lock loops that's towards the end of the series of lectures so this series of lectures is mainly aimed at uh, engineers working and practicing engineers and uh, uh, also at uh, uh, phd and research students thank you